Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the secret to shallowing your downswing and how to do it through wrist angles. All right guys, so let's talk about shallowing your downswing and the secret to shallowing your downswing. And I really think about what we're gonna talk about today and the wrist angles is the secret to it. We're not making that YouTube -y, clickbait type of deal. I genuinely think this is the secret um, to shallowing your downswing, meaning if you get this part right, the other stuff doesn't matter nearly as much. This is huge, so wrist angles, okay? I'm gonna take my setup and we're gonna to go to the top of the backswing. So let's first kind of briefly just reiterate and go over, make sure you guys understand when I say shallow downswing, what I'm talking about. And uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm talking specifically about the plane that the club is on. So this club here, if you were to kind of draw a line through it, is on a given plane or angle. And when I say shallow, I'm saying the club is gonna go on to a lower, um, or more shallow angle, more horizontal. This would be a steeper angle, more vertical. So I'm saying the secret to go from here onto a shallower, um, flatter plane is wrist angles. A couple things to understand um, here. There's sort of two different ways you can use your wrist angles. One good for shallowing, automatically shallows. The other one, not so good for shallowing. Uh, let's go over those two here first. When I get to the top of my swing, now you guys at the top might be in some different places. Where you're starting from has an effect on what you need to do. I'll say that one more time. Where you are starting from, where you get to at the top of your backswing affects what you need to do. Let's assume in Utopia, you get to the top of your swing, your left wrist is perfectly flat, your right wrist is bent back. Let's assume that, okay? From this position, how would I get the club to go on a flatter angle through my wrist angles, okay? What would I do? Well, what I would do specifically is two things. Number one, I'd take my left wrist and go from a flat position into a more bowed position. Now, you guys watching that, here's where I started, here's where I went to. Did that shaft get lower or more vertical? The shaft got lower when I did that. That works for me, it'll work for you, it'll work for everybody. That's part number one. Flexing the left wrist is a hot thing, it's talked about a lot, and it should be talked about a lot. If you take your left wrist from flat to bow down, lays the shaft down. If we accept that as true, then the opposite is also true. If I'm back in Utopia and you're at the top of your swing and your left wrist is flat, what, Eric, if I do the other version of that? Well, instead of me bowing my, or flexing my left wrist, I could cup it or extend it this way. Well, what would happen if I do just that? Well, if I extend or cut my left wrist, did that shaft get more vertical or did it get more shallow? It got more vertical, okay? That's it. It's not more complicated than that in terms of wrist angles. If you start flat and you bow it or flatten it, the shaft gets more behind you. If you flex it, the shaft gets steeper and more vertical in front of you. Every single person watching this video who comes from flat would benefit from either staying flat on the same plane or flexing it and getting on a shallower plane. Every one of you. No one here watching this video would I recommend going into a extended cup steep shaft. Nobody. So that's it. All of you should do that. That's easy. Now, there's another part that plays into that and how the wrists work. Okay, that video, that could be it. That could be the whole video. That's how you shallow a shaft with your wrist angles, period, okay? When do you do that from the top? Well, if you're coming from normal, you could do it right the hell away from the top. You could keep it flat early and do it more late from the top. I don't care, it doesn't matter. I could show you great golfers who do it right away. I could show you great golfers who stay flat and do it later. The point being, when you flex it, the club gets behind you, period. Okay, no question about it. Now, if you're not coming from flat, if you're at the top and you're coming from bowed, okay, does that same principle apply? It sure does. If I'm somewhat bowed and I go more bowed, would it lay down more? Yes, it would. If I'm somewhat bowed and I went from a bowed position to back to flat, that shaft would steepen relative to where I'm coming from. If I go to the top and I have a cup left wrist, I probably should fix that. But if I'm here and cupped at the top, if I bowed that in transition, could I get it to lay down? Yes, you could. If I come from cupped here at the top and I cup it more, would it steepen more? Yes, it would. So try and get flat or bowed at the top, make your life easier. Do you need to bow this in transition to lay down the shaft? No, you can keep it flat. You can keep it flat. If you wanna shallow it, 
you bow it, okay? Now there's another piece that goes along with this and that is, I'm telling you, if you're taking notes here, one thing to shallow your shaft, flex your left wrist. You're gonna say, okay, I already know that. Okay, good. Well, there's a wrist angles that go along with that and we've talked about this before. We'll talk about it again. We have a lot of videos on the membership site about this. We'll do more videos here uh, about how this goes together, which is this. My wrist angles, I can hinge up, radial deviation. I can hinge down, all in you. Just hinge up or hinge down, okay? The more my left wrist hinges up, the more it cups automatically. Now, if we go back about 30 seconds, I just got done saying cup is bad. Cup steepens the shaft. Cup would not help you shallow. So let's put some things together here. Eric's saying, if I hinge more, I will cup more. If I cup more, the shaft will be steep. Ergo, if I hinge more, is that going to make my shaft shallow? No. If I go to the top like this and I increase the hinge I have in transition, is that going to make the shaft flatten or is it going to make it steeper? It's going to make it steeper. Bad news for all you guys out there trying to get this lag angle. Guess what? When you get that lag, uh, lag angle, what happens there? You just added hinge. I just got done saying hinge leads to cup. What does that make the shaft look like? Like this. Every one of you guys watching that, that tries to do this lag thing that has too much hinge, there's no way you're going to shallow the shaft. No way. You're going to be beating your head against a wall, trying to lay the shaft down on one swing and then lag it on the next one. Well, man, I throw the angle. No, you have a wrist angle problem this way, okay? Not this way. You have it this way. You have to flex that. Hopefully that makes sense. Then the opposite is true, okay? If I said, when I hinge up, that goes along with cup, that makes the shaft steeper. Um, I'm gonna say it a hundred more times. Some of you guys are not like, I'm repeating myself, because you need to hear that and like write that down. Then the opposite is true. If I take my left wrist and I unhinge it, I hinge down, ulnar deviation, that goes right along with my left wrist being flat or bowed. Like a Bryson DeChambeau is a good example. Completely unhinged, got a flex wrist this whole time, made $3 million in one month playing golf. It's incredible. So unhinged and then left wrist bowed back like this. The point of that is this, if I went to the top and I said, hey, you're gonna go ahead and flatten that and flex that and that lays the shaft down, guess what else would lay the shaft down, okay? You guys are scared of casting. Well, if I unhinged, if I, un yes, I'm saying unhinge from the top, not add hinge. If I went here and I went to the top and I unhinged the club behind me and added flexion, where the heck is that shaft? That's shallow as hell behind me. Couldn't get it more behind me than that. If you want to shallow the shaft as much as you possibly can, you would do two things as much as you can. Every single person watching this video, you would take your left wrist, you would completely unhinge the club, but now you're gonna look at it and say, oh my God, no lag, what am I gonna do? Well, you take that and then you add wrist flex like this. And now all of a sudden you guys are like, all right, now I'm good, I'm back, okay? And the difference, think about that, both of those I'm unhinged here. That looks terrible. This looks great from here, right? Unhinged. You guys are like, yeah, I like that shallow shaft there like that. And from here, you guys are puking right now. You don't like that. But if I take the unhinge and I just bow this with it, now you love it here and you love it here. It's a two-dimensional versus three-dimensional thing. This shit is simple, right? It's not easy to do, but it's straightforward. If you guys are struggling with shallowing the shaft, there's, no, uh, there's an answer to all this stuff. There's no mystery. Why can't I shallow the shaft? Your wrist angles are jacked up for whatever reason. Your grip stinks. You go back, they're bad going back. Your pivot's bad. I don't know, but whatever reason why, your wrist angles. That is the secret to shallowing your shaft. Every single person here watching, that's true universally. So if you're not shallowing the shaft, you simply aren't doing that correctly. That is what it is. So um, that's it. Straightforward. Um, I don't think we need to talk about anything else. Flat, flexing it and transitioning it. Unhinging is good. Please, for goodness sake. Do not try and get this shallow. And then, and then inevitably someone's gonna show me a video of a anomaly of a tour player who goes like this when they come down. Well, they match that with other elements and you're not a tour player with that speed anyway. Flat, bowed, unhinged is what it is. Uh, that will work to shallow your shaft if you do it correctly. As always, if you guys have any comments, leave me a uh, comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you guys liked the video, please do me a favor, click the like button down below. 
click the notification bell if you haven't, and please subscribe if you haven't already. Just another quick reminder that our membership site, kagornogolf.com, has gone live. We'll put a link in the top right-hand corner. Uh, exclusive video content, more in detail than what we're able to do here in the videos. Live lessons on there. Uh, we have our Facebook group, live Q&As, a lot more stuff going on there. Uh, we'll, we'll spend more time. Check that out if you guys have interest. Again, that link will be um, in the top right-hand corner. If you guys have any questions about the video, as always, leave me a question or a comment down below. Hi, I'm Eric Cagorna. We're excited to share Cagorno Golf with you guys. Here's some of what you'll get. First, an on-demand video library of over 100 instructional videos that cover everything. I'm talking setup, backswing, downswing, impact, short game, putting, and much more. Premium members will also have access to exclusive over-the-shoulder lessons where you'll watch me working on the lesson tee one-on-one -on -one with a student live. I'll be helping students not only through mechanical elements, but also through feels and drills they'll need to improve. We're providing a wide array of content, tools, and interaction points to help you get better. Plans will be starting at $19 per month.